Sinful spoils grabbing our Diablo Star here. The opponent having no hand trap in sight. Let's speed this up, grabbing a Magician's Rod. Rod on summon, grabbing our Salvation, which will set up an Eternal Soul into the back row to summon a Dark Magician onto the field. We're gonna link this up into the Artemis, and then we're gonna send Artemis to the grave for our Diablo Star, setting up a Sinful Spoils of Betrayal, which will be able to negate any card in the field. Sending Garura from the extra next to the grave to then draw a card. Also, the Maximus could banish the Garura. But first, we're going to summon our Magician Souls, which we randomly drew into, to send the Salvation to draw a card randomly into Subversion, pushing our own monster into the back row here. That is interesting. Just so we can get a draw. By returning the Subversion back into the deck, we get to draw a card here. Maybe drawing into... Not so good. Not so good. All right. Let's see what we have. Well, all we have is a negate. We have nothing. Well, we have Dark Magician unaffected by everything with the Eternal Soul, but that's not a disruption. Yeah, that's kind of Earthbound, yes. Earthbound Prisoner grabbing a Resonator here. Crimson Guy will be searching our deck for a Red Dragon Archfiend monster. We have our Vision Resonator. Special summoning our Crimson Resonator. Sending to the graveyard our Crimson Guy to summon our Bone Archfiend to then Synchro Shokan into our Red Rising Dragon. Red Rising is going to be reborning the Crimson Resonator, at least attempting to do so. The Crimson Resonator would then summon two Resonators from the deck, but that play has been thwarted. That is a big, big deal as we then special summon our Vision Resonator from the hand to Synchro Shokan into our Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend. What does this do? It's royal. This card becomes Red Dragon Archfiend while on the field or in the grave. You could destroy as many other special summoned effect monsters on the field as possible. Let's see. We're activating our Absolute Power Force, which this card is considered to be a Red Dragon Archfiend, so it's going to gain all of those benefits. Okay. We have Red Zone. Activate. Wipe out the Diablo Star as the Sinful Spoils negates the effect of wiping out the field and then burning for 500 damage. Now that will trigger the Diablo Star to reborn itself from the graveyard. Could we have just let it die, right? Let her die, then she reborns, and we still have our negate. I think that maybe would have been better. Piercing double battle damage, and your opponent cannot activate anything in response to the attack. We're going to add back our Diablo Star at the end of the main phase two. We're going to Eternal Soul, our unaffected Dark Magician, onto the field here. With no Dark Magical Circle, we're not going to be able to banish anything. By activating a spell or trap that will trigger the rod to tribute a spell caster to add itself in the graveyard back to the hand, as the Ash then negates the Soul Resonator from adding a level four or lower fiend from the deck to the hand. We're going to further synchro this up into a hot red dragon archfiend with the ability to omni negate any card in the field, triggering the synchro resonator to grab the vision resonator in the grave back to our hand. And that was our turn to play. We have negate anything and with the red zone, when your opponent activates a card while you control a red dragon archfiend, which we do not have, we could then pop a card in the field. So that's unfortunate. The other effect we could still do is target a banished dark dragon synchro summon it onto the field, which we don't have. So that trap does nothing. Useless. Subversion, forcing the Hot Red Dragon Archfiend to negate. Now, this was public knowledge. The Sinful Spoil hiding in the graveyard. If the opponent activates anything in response to your Diablo Star or your Sinful Spoil, you negate. That's it. Negate, and then you go into the back. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sorry for having this as 2 0. That was game number one. Just like that, let's hop into game two. Crimson Resonator Special Summoning as we then summon alongside it our Wandering King Wildwind, which was a special summon. We have not used up our normal summon yet. Now, because we didn't declare an attack with our other monsters, they all get destroyed. But with Soul Resonator, knowing that that's gonna happen to your field, Soul Resonator has the ability to banish itself to protect yourself from destruction. Let's get to it. So what are our disruptions exactly? We have negate anything, destroy a monster in response to its activation, pop any card in the field in response to an activation of a card. So about triple disruption. If you don't count the bestial in the hand. Subversion, push the hot red dragon into the back row. We are going to negate. 
Now down to double disruption with the red zone and dissipator here. We could pop that just like that. Red zone on the activation, pop it. Do not add a card off the top of the deck. To the grave you go. You can't activate another copy, that's it. So we have one more disruption left. We now have zero. In response to the activation of the Magician's Souls, we are going to pop it. Still sending a Dark Magician from the deck to the grave. Now Maximus will be discarded to summon our Diablo Star. We have nothing left. Zit, I mean, we have the Bestial Ball Drake that can maybe do something here. Send them wanted to draw wanted, wanted activate, draw another card here. What can Dark Magician do? As we link this up in a dark, dark could steal a dark monster from the opponent's graveyard. The ball drake could banish that dark monster you're trying to steal from our graveyard. Okay. Subversion, yeah, works on any monster in the field. Push it into the back row. Wanted Seeker adding a Diablo Star, which already has normal special summoned itself this turn. We cannot do it again. Now this is it. Crimson Gaia searching for our soul. Resonator, Dispater, special summoning a banished monster onto the field. We have more than enough for lethal damage as we then take this into game three. Seeker in the draw phase, playing around the Droll in Lockbird here. We have Magician Soul being discarded for our Diablo Star, setting up into the back row our Sinful Spoil of Betrayal to negate any card on the field. Sending a Dark Magician to summon itself. Can only special summon once, negate any card in the field, negate a monster, negate a search or special summon from the deck, and we'll have an unaffected Dark Magician. We have about four disruptions here. Let's get to it. Chaos Space finding a new home in Resonator as the Ash negates. <laughs> yeah. I, the Schism's public knowledge, the Betrayal's public knowledge, us losing is public knowledge, we're out. Black Whirlwind being triggered on our normal summon, searching for our Vata. Triple 700 damage after every monster effect 2100 damage plus we have dissipator which will destroy a monster plus we have in the graveyard the sharnga which will pop any face-up card on the field if we have a blackwing synchro which we don't have this is not a blackwing synchro so we don't have that pop unless we use the twin shadow to summon a blackwing synchro so we have disruption 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 the Sharnga being dependent off of the back row disruption, plus the Veiler and the Droll. About six disruptions here, let's go. Now we're gonna be activating our Durendal, equipping it onto the Dispater, popping it to search our deck for a Fire Warrior, grabbing the red layer Super Quantum Power Ranger, Droll and Lockbird locking us into no more searching for the rest of the turn. Hanzo on Summon would have loved to search, but not possible. Activating the Mitsu to trigger the effect of the Triple Tax Dragon as we then go into Mizen. We're now gonna be using Iron Digger, equipping it onto the Dispater. Iron Digger will banish from the graveyard. Oh, this is a problem. We want the Iron Digger to be sent to the graveyard. So generally it would pop itself, but we, a better way to use it is equipping it onto an opponent's monster, then popping that monster, thus getting the Iron Digger in the graveyard to trigger its effect, to then summon a banished ninja onto the field. But we have the secret effect of the Black Feather Whirlwind. What is it saying here? It says that if a card would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you could remove a Black Feather counter from your field instead. So not only are we drolled, they have anti-destruction protection. This is not looking good. To battle we go, we have Mizen attacking directly, then ending our turn. So what do we have as a ninja player here? If the opponent activates anything, the Mizen could special summon a ninja from the deck at the cost of 2100 life due to the tax dragons. We have duplication, which could summon multiple ninjas from the deck. Let's see what we could do. Everything into attack position, over 13,000 damage on the field. At the start of the battle phase, summoning from the deck Tobari and our green ninja. The Tobari could perform a fusion summon, which would then banish a card on the field. That's exactly what we're going to be. Oh, no, we're, uh, we're done, we're done, okay. Well, during your opponent's main or battle phase, you could fusion summon at the cost of 2,100 life. It's too much. Let's take this into 
game number two. Ninja's going first. Terror Top is essentially a one card I sold. We are not going into that yet. We're going to be setting up with our Wakashi. Wakashi setting up the Benki, summoning itself onto the field, searching for the Soul Horns, equipping the Soul Horns, special summoning the Soul Horns to then make our Angelica. What the heck is this deck? Infernoble Super Heavy Samurai uh, Ninjas? Okay. Equip the Iron Digger. Now, you're considered to be a ninja. Ninja Infernoble, Infernoble Emperor Knight Charles. Okay, so we have the quick effect to pop a card in the field through the roll and be equipped onto the Charles whenever we want. We have spell and trap card negate through the Emperor Charles. We then have summon a ninja from the decks, which could turn into banish a card in the field. We don't have room to do that. We have monster negate, monster negate, monster negate through the Apollo USA. We then have a Mortal Gear Freed for a Monster Negate, another Monster Negate. And then we have the Angelic Ring for the ability to negate a spell. I think that's about eight disruptions, only eight. Are you sure there is not more? I think there's about eight disruptions. Let's go. I'm gonna be running out of fingers here. Angelic Ring, negate. Okay, summoning our Synchron, equipping Roland for the poppage, non-target pop. Popping our own Angelica, huh? Making room for the Mizen to summon a ninja from the deck. That's what we're doing. Tobari. No, Geo's gonna flip the field face down instead. And those cards are permanently flipped face down. Flip it. And we had about five more <laughs> disruptions left. We had negate a monster, negate a monster, negate a monster, negate a monster, negate a spell and trap, all unused and ready to be used whenever we want after flipping two cards on the field face down. The Mizen could either go into banish a card in the field or flip the field face down. Two cards. Very well done. Earl GB wants you to play I Spy. I Spy, the misplay. The misclicks, that is. Misclicks are different than misplays. Uh, the difference is that a misclick is pretty much meaning that it would not have happened in the paper card game. You would have played correctly instead of misclicking. It is user error through the Master Duel only. So Earl GB wants you to find out what are the two missed clicks he made. So we are setting up the Black Father Whirlwind. Bata is gonna be synchroing with the deck, getting a Zephyros in the graveyard, making our Blackwing Dragon, triggering the Black Feather to reborn the Vata, summoning our Assault Synchron as we return back to our hand our Black Feather Whirlwind to then replay it. It is a soft once per turn, making our Borea Storm. Borea send from the deck a Samoon to make ourselves level six. We now have Dispater to summon a banished monster, which we have no banished monster right now. We're gonna be reborning the Samoon, banishing the Borea Storm. Was that the misclick summoning a Samoon instead of uh, something to synchro with the Borea? I think that was a misclick right there, right? Because what is Samoon doing? What are we Samooning with? <laughs> Samoon is Samoonin on the field. I think that was the misclick. Yes. So we have a single tax dragon instead of three. We have Dispater, destroy monster in response to it activating. We don't have a Sharnga in the graveyard. Okay. Yeah, we don't really have much. Let's go. Special summoning our Terror Tops, searching for the Take Tomborg. We could have popped the Terror Tops so that the Take Tomborg would have not been special summonable here. Setting up the Wakashi, Wakashi, setting up the Benki, summoning Wakashi, Benki searching for the Soul Horns, Soul Horns equip onto a Super Heavy, then summon from the back row onto the field here, special summoning our Take Tomborg as we then make our Angelica. In response to being targeted, it could jump off the field. Now Wakashi's chain link block and the Dispater from destroying the uh, Angelica, which is not a targeting effect, so she would not be able to jump off the field there. Grabbing our Noble Arms Museum, which will search for an equip card, plus summon a monster from the back row, as we now make the Invoker. Do we pop the Invoker with Dispater? We cannot negate, as it summons from the deck our Heroic Challenger. 
Burning for 700 on every monster activation, by the way. We're already down to 3,800 life. I sold's got two effects. The first effect will cost 700, so maybe we pass on that effect, right? We don't activate on summon. We did pass on it. Going for the second effect, we do have Chinook. Chinook, while we control a Blackwing Synchro, which is the Boreal Storm, giving us the ability to negate. Negate that I sold. Burn for 700. Now, there's a secret effect on the field somewhere. That secret disruption is through the Blackwing Assault Dragon. It has the quick effect. You could tribute this card with four more Black Feather counters, and it's got seven. Destroy everything on the field. Straight up, just destroy everything. Okay? So when do we do that? Well, Gear Freed has the effect of when a monster effect is activated, you could send one face-up equip card you control to the graveyard to negate the activation. So with the immortal Gear Freed being on the field, there's no equip card yet. So we're wiping the field right now. Uh, maybe we should have done it on the resolution of the summon, right? It gets summoned, then wipe the field because it would have not been able to negate without an equip card. Send one face-up equip card so that you control to the grave. Yeah, I, I think we had to wait a little bit. Wiping the entire field with our Assault Dragon. We have normal summoned Han. We got them to wipe the field before we even normal summoned. So Hanzo searching for the duplication. We have Museum grabbing the equip card. That was the second misclick. Earl GB says that was the second misclick. The first one being summoned Samoon. The second one wiping the field early here. Grab the Iron Digger in the graveyard back to our hand. Iron Digger equip. Get it into the graveyard through Lincoln or popping it, making the Saizo. The downside of Saizo is you can't use duplication on it since it does not have a level. Heroic Call will be summoning a monster, which will be our I Sold here. Okay, with I Sold, what are we doing? Original Bamboo Sword equipped onto the Gear Freed. We do have our monster negate 7,100 damage, mate. Wait, the I Sold actually cannot attack, so we're off by 1,600 there. We have double monster negate with our Apollo USA. It just like that. The notebook will make the duplication become live if there is a card in the opponent's field, which uh, are we even summoning that Baldrake. We're banishing the Graver to summon our Assault Dragon. Now we can notebook to make the duplication become live. Set a ninjutsu art, set a ninja on the field, duplicate it summoning up to level eight. So we have one, three, seven. Okay, reborn the Geo from the Graver back onto the field here. Mitsu is a negate tobari is a fusion summon which will result in banishing card in the field that monster effect is going to cost us 700 life if we activate another monster effect we lose so burn for 700 but that second monster effect which will result in us losing only makes us lose if the Blackwing Assault Dragon is still on the field after activating the effect, the effect being to get rid of the Blackwing Assault Dragon. Ball Drake vanishing to come forth and summon. Gear Freed. You burn on the resolution of the chain. So that's double burn. That's 1400 damage, but the Assault Dragon must survive to trigger. Holy moly. Negate. And wait, no, what? Wait, it, it, it's not on the resolution of the trigger. It's after the resolution of the effect. That, no way. It's a continuous effect, not a trigger effect. It does ne still need to be on the field. When that effect resolves, burn for 700 does not wait for the resolution of the chain, but it does wait for the resolution of the effect. If that effect being getting rid of the Assault Dragon, it would not burn. So we had the play to get rid of the Assault Dragon, but we got baited by Baldrake. Baldrake tricking us into activating our effect to negate, and then just like that, losing to the Assault Dragon. Ain't no way that just happened. That was crazy. Bestial Lubellion, we are waiting with that Gamma, ready to negate and destroy anything. And what the heck was that? Nothing. We have Ash and Imperm only. Seeker of Sinful Spoils. The Ash would have allowed the Gamma to pop off here. We are coping. We are hoping they activate while we have no monsters on the field. Sending from the decks of the Grave Dark Magician to then summon that Dark Magician. Our Gamma is no longer activatable. Getting our Dark Magician Girl in the Grave to summon our Diablo Star. Diablo Star searching and setting up our Omni Negate. We now have Rod. Rod on summon going to get negated by the Impermanence. 
Holding on to that Ash. Ash being a better card to save for a card like Max C, but for this instance, I feel like Ash maybe would have been better because Impermanence would be activatable on our next turn had we not summoned the Bistial. So I'm thinking maybe because we plan on summoning the Bistial, that's why we chose to throw away our Impermanence instead. Chaos Angel on Summon, banishing that Bistial. Now end phase Magna Hut, searching for that Albion, which will result in a drawn card. Albion going for that draw here, sending from the deck a Retribution to randomly draw into our Branded and High Spirits, which will be searching for an Albaz monster, which will be negated by these sinful spoils. Thus, our triple tactics talent, the whole point of it being if your opponent disrupts you, you get to draw two, take control, or look at their hand. We can't use it because they disrupted us with a trap, which then resulted in a monster activation, which thus we could still now use the triple tactics talent. So it's good. Thank you very much for triggering Diablo Star. Now we could draw, take control, look at the hand, <laughs> looking at the illusion of chaos, tossing that fool back in the deck. Cartesia is going to be activating the Fusion Summon with the Mercurier. We have Elgu MSH with the five gifted tier subs, mate. Thank you very much. Sending a Serenir from the deck to the Grave Trigger. It's effect to send a Branded Fusion to then use the Retribution to add the Branded Fusion back to our hand. This is it. Branded Fusion sending from the deck to come forth and summon Albia. Now, with the Chaos Angel, there's a trick. You want to click on the Chaos Angel and you want to look at which effects are lit up. It is not lit on the light, so it is affected by monster effects. It is only protecting your monsters from battle destruction. That is not good. <laughs> Thus, we're surrendering. Just like that, we are out of here. Illusion of Chaos grabbing a Dark Magician from the deck here as we normal summon our Rod. Rod, grab our Dark Magical Circle. If you're playing against Dark Magician, which will never happen, if they search for a Dark Magician, you know that they probably already have Rod and they already have Magician's Soul, so use that information how you'd like. Sending from the deck a Dark Magician Girl to summon our Magician's Soul, setting up a Dark Magical Circle to then stack a card on top of the deck with the Soul Servant to then add that card. So we're going to stack a Secrets of Dark Magic, a Fusion Quick Play Spell, to then add it with the Dark Magical Circle, to then activate it to Fusion Summon with the Rod and the Dark Magician, making our Dark Magicians. If a Spell or Trap card is activated, we could then draw a card. So we're going to Soul Servant, activate its effect to draw two because we have Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl, and then we're also drawing one with the Dark Magician, so that was a draw three play. With the APK in the graveyard through the effect of the Nadir Servant, we're going to be searching for our Shadow Schism to then make a Shadow Window during the opponent's turn. While we don't have Max C to restrict our opponent from Special Summoning, we have Winda instead. While this card's on the field, only you could Special Summon once per turn. Just like that, get ready, let's go. But we have Called By. Called By could banish the Shadow on the activation of the Schism. The Schism's only activatable during the main phase. You could also finger the Winda fusion material before they use the Schism. So let's see what we do. We are draw phase fingering that APK and YouTube Ray is surrendering off of the finger. Ain't no way. We all in that window. Winda was our main play. Damn. One finger beats the Winda and we scoop it up. Wow.